Welcome to eFree Church. Whether you're watching online or joining us in the building, we are so grateful to have you here with us. <laughs> here at EFC, we're a multi-generational church of different people from different backgrounds and experiences, but we come together to focus on Jesus Christ. During our time together, you'll experience modern worship, get to see a snapshot of our kids' ministry, and hear an encouraging message from Pastor Rick. If you haven't already, be sure to download the eFree Church app. On the app, you can fill out our Connect card, register for in-person services, or use the Giving tab to make a donation online. Another way to give is to put your donation in the offering boxes here at the back of the Worship Center. Once again, we're so glad that you're here. Whether you've been a part of the EFC community for a long time or you're just now discovering us, we're glad that you are with us. Don't forget you can find us on Facebook, follow us on Instagram, and check out our YouTube channel for encouraging content throughout the week at your convenience. Thanks again for being here and we hope you enjoy the service.
Jesus, you're my hope and stay. Lord, I need you. Oh, I need you. Every hour, I need you. My I'm Dawn Summers, and I'm the Director of Children's Ministries here at eFree Church. And it's such an honor to join you today in this time of communion. As we begin our time together, I'm going to read a poem called The Bitter Cup, written by Hunter Bielis. And I just want you to take a couple moments and just rest, relax, close your eyes if you want, and focus on the words before we start communion. I fall to my knees. I cry, Lord, please take this bitter cup from me. I don't want to drink it anymore. Give me something pleasing, some wine to refresh my soul, some water for my parched lips. He kneels down and draws me close. Tenderly yet again, he holds the bitter cup to my lips. I'm so sorry, child, you must drink again. My tears flow. I look up and see that his do too. He looks into my eyes. Do you trust me? I do. I know him to be kind, to be good, to be gentle and humble of heart. Do you know how much I love you? Do you trust that this is for your good? In sorrow yet with peace, I see that the hand holding the bitter cup is the same hand that is upholding me now. The heart ordaining my pain is the same heart that loves me more dearly than anyone else. I marvel, I question, and yet I believe. The hand that breaks is the same hand that binds. The hand that gives me the bitter cup is the same hand that wipes my tears. And in both, he is good. When I read this poem for the first time, it gave me hope that I am not alone in anything that I suffer. You are not alone in anything that you suffer. Jesus is not just present with us, but he entered into our suffering and knows what suffering is. And I think the Lord's Supper is the most powerful reminder of that, that while Jesus willingly chose to endure the beatings and the floggings and the eventual crucifixion, that he not only gave us the opportunity for salvation, to be made right and made whole, and have a renewed relationship with God, but he gave us the hope that we will never be alone in anything that we endure on this earth. I think so oftentimes that's our MO, that's our go-to, is to feel abandoned through suffering, like no one cares, no one sees, but there is a God who sees and a God who knows what suffering is. And yet by the cross, he overcame absolutely everything that we will go through on this earth and that can give us hope. So as we take communion today, I want you to not be just reminded of Christ's sacrifice, but also be reminded of Christ's gift, of his presence with us through anything that we go through. So if you have communion with you, um, go ahead and get that out. 
Today I just had some iced green tea in the fridge and an English muffin. And so that's what I'm gonna be using today. Um, but really it's, it's not about the actual physical elements themselves, but it's what they represent. And so that's what we're gonna focus on today as we take communion together. I'm gonna be reading from Matthew 26, 26 through 30 today. And it says, while they were eating, Jesus took the bread and after giving thanks, he broke it, gave it to his disciples and said, take and eat. This is my body. Let's take and eat together. And after the words, he took the cup and he said, this is my blood, the blood of the new covenant that is poured out for many for the forgiveness of sins. Take and drink. Let's drink together. We'll close in a time of prayer. Dear Lord, we just thank you for this powerful reminder that you are always with us. And not only are you with us, but you suffered with us, perhaps more greatly than anyone would ever know. Dear God, I just pray that as we have taken the broken bread and the cup of the new covenant today, Lord, that we would be reminded of your sacrifice and we would be reminded of your great love for us that is not just salvation for our souls, but it is the powerful presence of your spirit in our life daily as we walk through the joys and the trials of life. We thank you for your amazing love. In Jesus' name, amen. Thanks so much for joining us today, and I hope you have a great rest of your day. Hey, Rick here from EFC, or otherwise known as E-Free Church, and thank you for joining us, and just a good morning or good day wherever you're at. A um, couple of logistical things, kind of in-house things. First off, just a uh, thank you uh, for your kind words on, uh, some of you saw my 25th uh, year anniversary video, and um, just uh, really, really appreciate a lot of that, and the staff's work, and uh, yeah, just many of you sending um, everything from cards, some good gifts, and I just really want to say thank you for that. Second thing um, is I want to let you know that uh, this might be the last week that you see me in here for a while. Maybe not, though, uh, but uh, not this Sunday, but uh, as you're watching right now, but the following week, this week we're going to be testing our live streaming capabilities and getting that all kind of figured out. Everything goes according to plan, and if it, everything kind of goes according to technology, which you all know what that's like, um, we should be live streaming. And, um, and the, the benefit of that, I think, is you'll get a chance to see people. Uh, we're still going to offer the, the host will be here, like Laura and Chloe. Um, you can still kind of tap in to, and just, you know, prayer requests, the, the, all, all of that stuff will all be available. Um, but you'll be able to see a full live service. Um, we'll make sure that whether it's a live host, uh, whether it's myself, uh, we'll continue to um, just make sure that we communicate with you during the service, letting people know that you're, they're, uh, people are joining us from all over the world. And so I think it will be a highlight. And what that will do is that will free some of us up to do some other things in ministry, which I'll talk about a little bit later uh, in our talk today. So with that, let's jump into Ecclesia Part 7. I'm going to call it Our Turn. And if you're newer, this is kind of your first time to be watching or you're newer to the church, I'm going to tell you up front, this is not, can't be able to say this, this is not going to be much of a message, okay, much of a sermon. Um, what do you mean, Rick? Um, don't tune me out yet. What I mean is what I typically do is a series anywhere kind of from four to eight weeks and somewhere around week four, five, six, this time it's uh, week seven, 
I'd like to review a little bit more, you know, just take some time and, and hit home some important application, okay? Um, it's important. Otherwise, what I find is, I know I'm the one giving the messages, and it's hard to remember everything. And, and that we're not just called to be hearers of the word, we're called to be doers of the word. I think of James 1.22, it says this way, do not really listen to the word, and so deceive yourselves. Instead, do what it says. And there's just a lot of us these days. <laughs> Listen to, you know, we, and it's the thing is when we have access because of things like this, things like this, which I'm so thankful for. I mean, every day I listen to a podcast for the most part when I'm doing my cardio uh, or maybe three, four times a week, I should say. But man, sometimes we're getting bombarded by so much information, but we're not doing anything with it. And I think that's one of the problems with, with really the church and the West as a whole right now. I mean, we're being bombarded with information. We're listening to podcasts, to messages, people like me, men, women. But are we really, really living it out? And, and so I think it's why it's important to stop. And, and so if you're you know, listening and you go, this is much of a sermon, because I'm going to review a little bit, and I'm going to go right into some application, okay? Because the key word there is do what it says, okay? And I'll encourage you. I think one of the great things about technology is you can either use uh, the YouTube platform, just look up eFree Church uh, from Bloomington, Illinois, or you can download our church app. I know we have had a few problems with that just recently. We've handled those. Uh, should be able to download that now as well, and all the messages are there, and you can listen to those if you need to catch up. What we've said so far is simply this. It's a real brief review. The church launched over 2,000 years ago, not as an institution, kind of what we know today, not as a building, not centered around you know services and people like me and worship bands or choirs and organs. It launched as a movement of people, period. And within a few weeks, within a few weeks of the death and the resurrection of Jesus Christ, Jewish people, thousands of people in that very city where these events took place, okay, they embraced the idea that Jesus was the Christ, the Son of the living God. And it, it, it was a kind of a kickoff, a spinoff, so to speak, a, a cult connected to Judaism, okay? And the Jewish leaders, though, didn't want anything to do with it. So they began to persecute the followers of this Jesus, of this what's called the way back then. We talked about this. One of the top persecutors was a guy by the name of Saul of Tarsus, otherwise known as Paul, the, what we typically know as the Apostle Paul. And he began to basically the organized really an official inquisition so to speak to find the followers of the way and bring them to Jerusalem have them beaten have them imprisoned and sometimes even put to death and as he was doing this an incredible story right in the middle of all his story he comes to faith he becomes a follower of Jesus Christ in an incredible way and the very cult he didn't believe in that he was persecuting, he became a leader of over those first few years. And he becomes the number one spokesperson, we said, for this new thing that eventually became known as the church or the ecclesia. And he began to travel all around the Mediterranean Rim, around Greece and Turkey. And he began to plant these little ecclesias, these little churches of people, of all different kinds of people and diversity. And it just began to continue to move to different parts of the world. And suddenly, people from all different nationalities, all different kinds of people from the Roman world, the Greek world, they began to embrace Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior. Free people, slaves, Jews, Gentiles, Romans, it's men, women, young and old. And as time went on, as time went on though, this beautiful thing did have some dark moments. You know that there's dark days. You know, you, you learn that in your history class, you know, maybe in college or in high school. And we all know some of those very, very sad days in the Ecclesia. You know, where, where we know the whole Middle Ages where some things went horribly wrong and things were done horribly in the name of Jesus. You know, where, where, they, where they said that God was, you know, ordained the rights of the nobles. And it was a way to kind of legitimize poverty. Yeah. Um, you know, things like the Crusades. I have to go in lots of details, but you know we're launched in the name of Jesus. The Spanish Inquisition was launched in the name of Jesus. And, and I mean, you know of other stuff. Fast forward to, to modern days, and whether it's the Catholic Church, you know, it's really well known for priests and abuses. But let's be honest, even for those of us in Bible churches, evangelicals, we have had our tragic stories, even in the last few years throughout this country, as well as in Europe and Australia. And things have been at times really dark and bad. But in spite of all that, I'm always thankful 
there's always, always been a remnant of people who recognize it's not about a service or a denomination or, or, or celebrity pastors and bands, about people who love Jesus and love others and realize it's a movement. And there's always been a remnant. There's always been a group of people that understood this is a movement on mission. The way Jesus said it, we talked about this in this book of Acts in early on, was that he told his followers, you will receive the power of the Holy Spirit and you will be my witnesses. You'll, you'll be able to share this. My witnesses in Jerusalem and all Judea, Samaria, and to the ends of the earth. And that's exactly what began to transpire you know, over those first couple of decades of this thing called the ecclesia, the church. Now, now as a result... <laughs> As people were loving, you know, loving people, and they were loving and attending to Jesus, it transformed not only Jerusalem, but it began to tr transform people all over the world. I mean, you know this already, you know? So many hospitals were, were produced or, or constructed and put together in the name of Jesus all over the world. Just look at some of the hospital names near you, wherever you live, you know? It's a picture of St. Joseph, St. Joseph's right here in Bloomington, Illinois. Millions of people have been fed, children, over the many, many years, like, like ministries like Compassion International, a, a, a Christian, a church organization that's about compassion and helping to alleviate poverty. Millions of people have been housed and given homes in the name of, uh, of Habitat for Humanity, where, where, where Christ followers and others get together and build homes for, the, for those who have a need. Children have been sent to school in the name of Jesus. I can go on and on. Things like slavery was ended in Europe and England, which eventually led to the, uh, the abolition movement here in our country that did, finally did away with slavery. Racial justice and equality, women's suffrage and the equality movement for women, all Christians and the church, the ecclesia, has all been a part of really making equality and, 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 and value the image of God in all people. We've seen that elevated everywhere throughout the world. Missionaries have risked their lives and given their lives in order to take this incredible mission, uh, this incredible mission-minded message, the pure message of the gospel, without all the churchiness and all the other stuff that pollutes the message, just the raw message of the gospel to people all over the world. So, part of it, here we are, you know, gathering on this Sunday, and June fifth, okay, and people all over the world, as a result of the boldness of the movement of the people who were following Jesus early on in this ecclesia, this thing called the church. See, there's always, always, always been a group of people that understands this is a transcultural, transgenerational, it's for all nations, all people. Now, we didn't cover this verse last week. It was in my notes. But it's a verse that's really important. I mean, it's why Paul would have to write things like this to remind them. Because it's hard at times. I mean, the Christian life gets hard, really hard at times. Loving is not easy. <laughs> It's easier to point fingers. It's easier to do dissension. It's easier to have discord and disunity versus finding common ground in the middle and loving people. That's exactly, and serving people, that's exactly where real work and the real hard work is done. Paul said this way to a, a little ecclesia in Galatia. He said, so in Jesus Christ, all of you are the children of God through your faith. You're all, you know, he goes, for all of you who are baptized into Christ have clothed yourselves with Christ. And he reminds them, there's neither Jew nor Gentile, neither slave nor free, neither there's male nor female, for you are all one in Christ Jesus. You're all one. You're all of the same equality and value. Folks, we read those words. And to be honest, in the 22nd century here, 21st, excuse me, 20, yeah, 21st century, excuse me, <laughs> jumping ahead, 21st century, we don't even think twice. But do you realize how revolutionary that was at the time? <laughs> and that's the kind of stuff the church has done to create a movement throughout this world that, is, that has been incredible, and so much so in bringing people to Jesus that now nearly over one third of the population of this world claims to be Christ followers. And we talked about this last week, we're not just stewards of the message of eternal life. We are the stewards of a message of a better kind of life. We offer an alternative. I, I would even use the term countercultural. We're going to talk more about this in the next few weeks. Um, that's going to be very, very important. A better kind of life. Matter of fact, one of the things we're going to talk about 
uh, a little bit next week, is this whole idea of being multi-generational. I, I think we're living in a day and age that we're seeing such division in, in not only in ethnicity or socioeconomic classes, uh, nations, I mean, just uh, politics, but we're even seeing the great divide amongst generations. That's one of the reasons we are so committed, not only being diverse ethni- from an ethnicity-wise, but also how do we minister and how do we bring together you know, different generations at any given time in a church like ours, we have five generations represented, and all of them very, very different for lots of different reasons. There's a better way of doing life. There's neither male nor female, neither Jew nor Gentile. I would say neither old, <laughs> middle aged, or young. You know, I mean, there's just, we all have our value, and it's so important going forward because ultimately the power of the gospel has the power to transform lives, families, communities, nations, and even ultimately the world. <laughs> That's what this, is, this movement has always, always, always been about. Think about your own life. You know, and, and that's why we talked about this last week, that ultimately uh, the world is all about this. The world is all about, in Galatians chapter 5, it's all about the acts of flesh, sexual immorality, impurity, debauchery, idolatry, witchcraft, hatred. But I, I think of these things, these last few. Hatred? <laughs> Man, all you got to do is have one social media account, let alone multiple. And we the hatred, the discord jealousy, fits of rage and anger, selfish ambition, dissensions, factions, and envy, and drunkenness, and orgies, and the like. I warn you, as I did before, Paul writes in Galatians 5, that those who live like this will not inherit the kingdom of God. (laughs) Are they like, you know, it's like Paul knew what it was going to be like in 2022. But the reality was just like that back then, too. I always tell people, we don't live in the worst of times. We just live in different times. And the reality is, he said there's a different way. And he says, he goes on in Galatians 5, he says, but the fruit of the Spirit, and anybody who has Jesus inside of them, as part of this movement, has access to this fruit of the Spirit, which is love, joy, peace, forbearance as patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. Against such things there is no law. And I love that there is no law. Whatsoever. So, so these people lived out boldly in strength. The attributes go back. Love, joy, peace, forbearance. This is the hard work. This is what takes strength. This is what takes courage, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control. It is easy to be dissenting, to hate, to point fingers and discord, to live a sensate or anything like That's the easy way. That's what many do. But you, if you are called out as a Christ follower, we have a different way, a different way of living, a better way of living. And so all this to say, kind of review it, I'll I'll summarize it this way. When you read the book of Acts, the reason the message of Jesus even survived this first century, how in the world did it survive? This little ragtag bunch of people that was, you know, basically a hundred people, you know, lost its leader to death, you know, but, but claimed he rose again, which I believe, which many of you believe. It survived the destruction of this huge Roman Empire. Think about that. Just think about it. We don't think of it in those terms. It, it, it survived that which was the most powerful empire maybe at that time ever is because of this reason. There was a group of people so extraordinarily bold and willing to do things, to say things in ways that had never been said or done before. (laughs) And we looked at some of those prayers and their actions and and, and things like found in Acts chapter 4. We we saw their prayer after they were were beaten, after they were um, whipped and flogged and and threatened their very lives and, and, and the leaders and the Romans. And they did that to Jesus just a few, you know, just a few weeks, almost a couple months before that. And when that was done, they told him to stop saying and stop speaking about this name of Jesus. Stop teaching about this Jesus dude. Instead, their prayer, where we would have been praying for safety, we would have been praying for, Lord, protect us, and maybe we're not going to go out and do this kind of stuff. They said, consider their threats and enable your servants to speak the word, your word, with great boldness, with great great boldness. That's how this thing survived. That's how this thing moved. That's how it spread to Turkey, to Asia Minor, to Greece, that whole area. That's how it spread to Europe, to Asia, to Africa. That's how it spread to North America, South America, all the way up 
until 2022 today. And so I go on. And the reality is now it is our turn. Now it's our turn. Don't we want to be part of that kind of a group? That kind of a bold group? Don't we want to be part of a remnant like that? Don't we want to be part of an extension of what's happened 2,000 years ago when this little ecclesia started? I mean, I know I do. And I'll be honest with you, I know things have been hard. Things have been really hard. I was talking to somebody today at the gym, and it's funny, as we talk about just even for him, he was talking about it's so hard to find employees. Um, this might kind of surprise you, but he's like, in his business, he's like, you know, the reality is I can't find people to do this work anymore. And so we're hiring people right out of college for six figures. But we have trained them for two years because no one, they're not, no one's available. It's just, it's, it's just a different, difficult time. We know this. Gas prices. I mean, you know, there's, there's so many hard things going on. It's difficult right now. We are living in unprecedented times in my world, the church world. <laughs> One third of all people that we're attending, maybe for some people, 40, 50%, they're gone. They're gone. The impact of that from a volunteer basis, we're just talking that Brandon and Derek and I just talked about that, you know, before we started this, from a volunteer perspective, from a, from a financial perspective, you know, and uh, we are in unprecedented times. But here's where I'm, I have been myself. I, I, I've gone through bouts of, of depression, of difficulties, of how in the world are we going to get through? <laughs> but part of it is this series has encouraged me. <laughs> because I'm, I'm, I'm thinking about this. I thought, you know what? It was worse back then. It was far worse back then. It's been times it's been far worse than it is right now. And the other, the other reality is, I, I really believe this. Whenever there is unprecedented times, there is unprecedented opportunities for God to work. Do you believe that, folks? That this is a time for God to show up, and He's done His part. And it's going to sound weird. I think we need to do our part. He has set the stage already. We've given all the resources. We've given the Spirit. That spirit of God that lives inside of us. We've been given the message. We've been given the model of Jesus and his model of ministry. We've been given all of that, okay? There's more opportunity than ever to serve and to love. There's people who are hurting in their marriages. The, the trauma in these last few years, it continues. I really believe we have all been through and are, have been impacted and are now dealing at some level with trauma. And I'm telling you, now is our turn. Now is our time to step up. And if you've been around here at EFC for a while, just a few years back, been already four or five years, we celebrated our 50-year anniversary. EFC, faithful and forward. We called it. We faithful that we celebrated the past 50 years, and we did rightly so. Thanked all the people who went before us, and, and how this church, this little church here in Bloomington Normal, has been faithful to the mission that God has given us to serve, reach, and grow people in Jesus Christ. But we also pointed forward. <laughs> we pointed forward. And I'll be honest back then. I remember pointing forward and we had talked about a few things. But, you know, it's like part of it is it's a little bit cloudy for me still. Now it's not nearly as cloudy. As a matter of fact, it's almost taken me this few years to figure out <laughs> moving forward. Maybe it's more clearer than ever. <laughs> and in, in reality, I think it's time for us to think more than ever about how to do church in a different kind of way. There's a big difference, okay, from 1967, 68 when this church was born. Think about that, 1967 and 68 to where we're at today in 2022. There, wouldn't you agree there's a big difference? I mean, I am coming to your kitchen, your family room, your sunroom, whether you're here, whether you're in Connecticut, in Chicago, in the UK, or in Arizona. You couldn't even dream. No one would even think about that kind of stuff, right? In 1967. Heck, even the Jetsons, I don't think, were available at that time with their technology. A little window there, kind of seeing into the future. But, but, but I, I digress like usual. The reality is this. The reality is this. So much has changed, and more than ever, I think we have to think about doing church in a different way. I've been, I've been, we've been talking about it here at, at, at E Free, and part of it's our turn to be bold. Okay, think of that prayer that first church gave. Give us, Lord, help us to be bold in speaking Your Word. So, if there was ever a time in the life at our church at EFC that we need to be bold and take risk, it is now. So, here's what I want to do: in the light of these first six weeks kind of an accumulation of some of those verses we looked at and what we've been talking about. Let me just give you three things, I think, that will help us to be bold moving forward. 
And that's simply this. I need you to do some things also. I say it this way. Do some things that at a level that maybe you've never done before, to think about it in ways and do things in ways you've never done before. If you really believe that Jesus is the hope of the world, and we believe that the ecclesia isn't a building, it's not an institution, it's not a, it's not a service, it's not a style or how we do ministry. I, I've heard it said before, don't ever, ever marry the methods, okay? You marry the mission of the church, and you simply date the methods. The methods, how we do church needs to change all the time to meet the ever-changing and growing needs of the community in which we live in. Here's what I need you to do. Four, uh, excuse me, three areas. Number one, I need you to be bold in your loving more than ever. Bold in your loving more than ever. We're going to talk more about this in a couple of weeks, okay? But the reality is what changed, the, the, the catalyst for Christians in changing everything, in being the force, so to speak, that changed this world, it wasn't as political. It wasn't in its political might. It's with a sword or a gun, with power. It was through the incredible ability for it to love people genuinely, in ways that put others' needs ahead of their own. Jesus said it this way. It's, it's caught in John. And the very end of Jesus' life and ministry, when he was with his disciples in the, in the upper room, and he gave them this new command in John 13. A new command I give you, love one another as I have loved you. Let me just stop and just keep that verse up there, Brad. How did he love you? <laughs> Sacrificially, with an agape love, unconditional love. He loved you fully for who you and I were. That is so powerful. And he gives us a command. So you should love one another? So hopefully you do love one another? No. So you must love one another. As I have loved you, I've modeled it. I've done it. And they didn't realize he's about to go to the cross and die for them, okay, which is the way of Jesus, which should be the way of his followers. And But he gives this little thing. By this, by this, everyone will know that you are my disciples if you love one another. What I'll do in the next few weeks is I'm going to kind of talk through some of the ways in which this changed everything in those first decades and centuries. Everyone will know that you are my disciple if you love one another. That's our brand, okay? That's our brand. McDonald's, it's the arches, right? Okay? Um, whatever brand you want to think of, whatever your favorite you know, thing is. Coca-Cola, you know, it's the swirl. Pepsi, it's the little, it's the, it's the, you know, got, we've all got their brands. For the church, it's meant to be love that we would be known by our love. And I need you to think about this. I need, I say this to myself. <laughs> the power of the gospel, if we believe has the power of the gospel to transform lives, nations, communities, families, then we need to love boldly. Love people, serve them. We used to use a word around here, invest in people. Raise your awareness of the people around you. Here's one of the problems with our world today. We are so self-focused. We are so selfish. We live in an individualistic culture that's raised up the self and the importance of self far, far more than what Jesus has done. It doesn't mean you ignore yourself. You take care of yourself. We're going to talk about more of this as well in the future. But Christ followers change their world by putting the needs of others ahead of themselves. That's love. That's agape love. Loving people unconditionally, without judgment, without you know hypocrisy, just loving people. But 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 Rick, man, if we love, they might think we're affirming. You love. It's exactly what these people did. Just raise the people, raise your rich people around you that you work with, in your neighborhood, who you go to school with, and I'll give you a couple quick things you can do. Just simple empathy. Um, I, I, I heard this. I just love this. Empathy has no script. There's no right way or wrong way to do it. It's simply listening, holding space, withholding judgment, emotionally connecting with an individual, and communicating an incredibly healing message of just, this is the message, you're not alone. You're not alone. That's all empathy is. Just, just being with someone, listening, not judging. My gosh, where loneliness is at an epidemic high. I have talked to some counselors recently. Because again, the needs of people both in this church and outside this church are greater than I've ever seen before. Even those who are close to me. And, and counselors have three, four month waiting lists. I mean, I'm, I'm using online counseling for people now more than ever, okay? And in part is 
what people just genuinely need, you know this for yourself, just someone to simply listen to you, to connect with you, to empathize. That's, that's love. Isn't that what Jesus did with us? When, when there was no way, we had no way to save ourselves, no way to fix ourselves, that's exactly what God did. He sent us his son, Jesus. In scenario, in scenario, in his ministry, he just simply empathized with the woman caught in adultery, <laughs> with the woman at the well, with the leper, with the, with the cripple, with the tax collector. By this, everyone will know that you are my disciples if you love one another. And I can't think of a time right now, this is where I think we've blown it as the Big C Church. We had our moment, we had our moment, and I, we're gonna still have a moment. But when times got really tough over the last couple of years, we chose division. And we chose political party over unity. We chose political party over love. And we blew opportunity to be the church. Now, I believe there's still opportunity. I believe it will start, though, when we really begin to love people unconditionally, the way Jesus has loved us. And folks, it's a command. It's a command that we must love one another the way I have loved you. It's not an option. So if we got bold, I got bold, I've been doing this more. And I tell you, here's another phrase I use all the time. Now, I can get away with this because I'm a pastor. Maybe you're thinking, you can't. But I'm telling you, have you ever been offended by when someone says and they talk to you, hey, how can I pray for you? I have done this multiple times the last couple of weeks. Hey, by the way, how can I pray for you? <laughs> now, here's the deal. Don't do that unless you're ready to listen to somebody and pray for them and maybe even have opportunities to love them, okay? Because I'm telling you, <laughs> it'll blow you away if you just have the courage and the boldness to ask, how can I pray for you? Helping somebody with their marriage right now. Helping somebody right now with their dying parent in the last stages. Because oftentimes I can say is, how can I pray for you? Which leads to a conversation. Then the next question is, how can I serve you? Which is all love, right? Talk about, you know, genuine love. And loving and serving people gives you and it gives me credibility. And here's another way you can love too, by the way. And then we'll move, on the, we'll move on to the next one. It's just think about inviting people. Be bold in inviting people. You know, you know what I love about little EFC? Not a lot of pomp, not a lot of, you know, uh, I don't know. I mean, just uh, what I love about EFC and our little church is it's genuine. It's authentic. What you see is what you get. Um, I hope that we talk about real things. I hope to do more of that. My goal is to make you more knowledgeable about the Bible. My personal goal is to help you fall more and more in love with Jesus and to love God better through what Jesus has done for you and to love your neighbor as yourself and using the scripture as a platform into helping you and me become more attuned to the Jesus way of loving God and loving others. And I think we, as a church, you know, we've done well, we can get better. And I think we have a chance to really, really meet a lot of needs that way, okay? So think about inviting to the online platform here, those of you who are digital, to your neighbor for a live service, to your kids. we got some great kids stuff coming up. Dawn and her team has planned some great stuff for kids ministry. I know Andy just left for a youth trip to, to Alaska to do some missions work, but there's some youth stuff. Man, just even taking, hey, is your kids, are your kids involved? Would you wanna join our kids and maybe you know, go into their youth group? And I'm telling you, people aren't offended by that stuff. Be bold and loving and inviting. Second one is be bold in your generosity. Be bold in your generosity, okay? This is where we saw it. We already saw it in this whole book already that we've kind of gone through some of the first few chapters. In chapter four, all the believers were one in heart, one in mind. No one claimed that any of their possessions were their own, but they shared everything they had. I mean, it's just amazing what they did. That's incredible, bold generosity. Think about that for a minute, just stop. And with great power, the apostles continued to, to testify in the midst of this generosity about the resurrection of Jesus. And God's grace as a result of their generosity and their generosity being tied to the resurrection of Jesus, everlasting life, was so powerfully at work in them that all, okay, in them all, that, this is what it says in verse 34, that there was no needy people among them. 
From time to time, those who owned land and houses sold them, brought the money from the sales, and they put up the apostles' feet, and it was distributed to anyone who had need. Now, before you start sweating in a cold sweat, and thinking, okay, okay, he, he's going to ask, you know, I'm not asking you to sell a house, I'm not asking you to sell land, okay? That's the kind of stuff that Joel Olstein and others like that do, okay? I'm just asking simply, when I look at that pattern, it, it just challenges me. And, and again, it, it's not just resources. I'll come back to resources. I'm just saying be bold in your generosity, your time and your talents. Be bold. And I, I put it, you know, I, th I thought I hear my notes. Serving and just simply volunteering. I'll do the first one, serving. We've had Go Serve Week. Some of you have already participated in that or you're going to participate in that. I'm telling you, part of it is it's not just a week. We're, we're talking about as a staff because we want to make this a lifestyle. I mean, just imagine if, if our little church, our little ecclesia, EFC, was known as the serving church. Like we just loved unconditionally. They were bold and loving people. You know, it didn't matter what they said or how they dressed or how they talked or whatever party they voted. They just loved people and they served people. When there's a need, they would serve people. They just served. What would happen? Can you imagine what, we, what that would do to a community? In our little, little world, so to speak, or you in Arizona, or whether it's, you know, Chloe and Kurt and Miss, T, Miss T and Tawny in, in, in England. I mean, the power, don't underestimate the power of a boldness and a generosity with serving other people. In a day and age, in a Babylon culture, it's all about self and what's in it for me. It is countercultural. It is counterintuitive. And that is the way this church has grown, this remnant. There's always been a people who are a remnant that understand the boldness and love and serving. And with their, not only their resources, but their time and their talent. Let's, let's make that a, a bold way to love and serve others. Okay? I also, those of you, for volunteering. I'm, I'm telling you, we need help volunteering. We are just talking about that a little bit this, this afternoon. Weren't we, guys? And, and part of it is, you know, we're down 30% of our people. There's no doubt, 30, maybe 33, 35% of our people. And part of me, at first, it's been hard. But, you know, part of me, like, these are the people who, who are here. I, I want to measure the people who are here, done going after anybody who's not here. But I also believe the people who are here, like you, you're, you're, in. <laughs> you're in. You're already in. You're already bold. And I think you want to be challenged to be even more bold. And one of the ways is to volunteer. There's things. We need hosts for this online platform. We need, if you're, if you're, you know, we need hosts to, uh, to help with this. We need help, uh, hosts and greeters here at eFree and our live campus services. We need children's uh, ministry people. We can't even do a second service. We do the one service with kids' ministries and youth ministries, but we can't do the other service because we don't have enough volunteers for children. We need singers and musicians and people with computer skills. I mean, there's, there's, a, there's, so to speak, a list. And some of you, I need you, you're on the sidelines, I need you to get in the game. We need you to get in the game. And I don't just say that for us. I say that for the message and the movement of the ecclesia to make a difference in people's lives who aren't even here, who aren't even watching, who aren't physically here. And too many of us are on the sidelines. I need you to think about being bold in your serving and volunteering. Consider, you know, volunteering in, in an area. I'm telling you, I know you're busy. I know you're busy. But understand this, that every single Sunday you attend digitally or you attend in person, you're served by very busy people. Be bold in your generosity with your giving. And I want to, again, say from the onset, some of you, you are giving generously. And I say thank you, thank you, thank you, okay? Um, others of you, though, some of you aren't giving at all, or you're giving so little. I want to challenge you to give more. We have some bold things we're planning as fall, like a deeper discipleship pathway when it comes to emotionally healthy spirituality. I know in order to get us to, we've got to grow deeper before we can grow wider. We've got to grow deeper before we can grow wider. And it's going gonna, it's gonna to take time, intensity, but I'm telling you, it's well, well worth it. And to do that, though, it's going to take some generosity. We want to do more in the children's ministry area, in the youth ministry area. We want to actually, for the first time ever, <laughs> we had to cut a little bit of our support to our missionary strategic partners, okay? I want to get them back to full support from us. That's going to take people's generosity. We're, we're planning on this fall of launching digital ministry more than ever than we've ever done because, again, we live in different times, a different era. 
And I think this is an incredible opportunity to minister to people, not just on a Sunday morning, not just at a certain platform, but all throughout the week. And I, I, but it's not going to be just monologue. I think it has to be done through dialogue and through podcasts and through collaborating and introducing you to other, other ways or other people who, who can minister to us as parents, as individuals, in our marriages, as Christ followers. But that's going to take finances. So I need people to step up and be a part. Third, so be bold in our love, our love, and our serving and generosity. And then lastly, I need you to be bold in your prayers. Now, what I mean by this, now, I, I know, I know how it goes. I mean, I was there for years, you know. Make your little list and you thank God for the day. You help them, you ask for the help to, to get, you know, to somewhere. Maybe it's vacation to somewhere safely, you know. Maybe if you're younger to get an A on your test or for your boss not to be such a jerk. And you pray all these prayers. And to be honest, oftentimes they're selfish prayers. You pray for sick people, which isn't so selfish. But my, my point is, is, when you get done with those prayers, just keep praying those prayers. But I need you to start praying some bold prayers. <laughs> like the people in this first little ecclesia did in the book of Acts. <laughs> to speak the word, the word boldly. It doesn't mean be a jerk. It doesn't mean have a megaphone and go out. I'm not saying that. But I think part of it is, is pray boldly. <laughs> Start with the people who are around you. Those people who you know aren't Jesus followers. And you just start praying for them. Pray for, for you to love on them and maybe serve them. Again, I'm telling you, powerful to ask them, how are they doing? And oh, by the way, how can I pray for you? Nobody has ever told me when I've said that to them, that they're offended, okay? Now, it might happen, but it hasn't happened to me yet. You know, and just start being bold in your prayers. Just pray for them daily. Pray for yourself daily. Pray to not be, I don't know, what's the word, in some way complacent. To, to be bold in, in living out your faith, to be the hands and the feet, to have the heart of Jesus. You imagine, you imagine what could happen to you if you prayed a prayer every single day, God, may I be more like Jesus, may I think and may I feel like Jesus, may I be attuned to the needs of those around me, may I be attuned for ways of just meeting those, those needs, may I just look people in the eye, Jesus, may I just give them some empathy and some care, showing them simple value because they're a human being, whether regardless of how they dress, how they vote, what they look like, what they're smoking, what they're drinking, and just love. Start praying bold prayers. That's how this thing got out of the first century, was love. People being bold in their prayers and their generosity. Look at those verses again that we put up there. And you imagine if our little church, EFC, began to rally around something like that? That's why I think it's so important to stop. Don't just be hearers of the word, be doers of the word. And that's what I'm calling myself to. I've been, I see the difference in my life. I feel the difference in my life. I believe in Jesus as the hope in the world. I believe this church is, is the only organization, the church, not the big C, not EFC, we're a part of that, is really the only, only thing that exists for the people outside of itself. It's so, so revolutionary. And the way we're going to do it is through loving and serving, not through political might, not through power, not through power grabs, and, and not through, you know, military might. <laughs> it's through a basin and a towel. Love one another the way I've loved you so that people will see me in you and they'll know that you are my followers. Well, I've given you enough to think about, but more importantly, I hope enough to not just think about, but to ultimately do. Can you imagine? Maybe we're three, four hundred people total. I don't even know to be honest. We're, we're around there somewhere. <laughs> you imagine just that. If we just got that that group, all it took was twelve and one hundred and twenty. <laughs> that first ecclesia, and here we are a couple thousand years later. And look at the result of the boldness of the living, the loving, the inviting, the serving, the generosity, the prayers of that first little ecclesia. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, man, I am more excited than ever to be in ministry. I really am. <laughs> and I don't know why. Something's clicked in the last couple of weeks for me. <laughs> part of it's been the series. Part of it's been stuff I've been reading, listening to. Part of it's just the reality that even though it's my human flesh is to get a little bit 
disappointed, <laughs> scared, and it's still there. <laughs> Fearful. You know, there's things, you know, war in Europe, <laughs> economic potential crisis down the road. We've already had the pandemic. My God, in this country, we, we shoot and kill people every single day of every single year. We got people who can't even get along with each other because they think a little differently or they look a little differently. And it is easy, and I admit, God, <laughs> it's easy to get frustrated and hopeless. But then I look back at this little ecclesia in the very beginning, <laughs> and to be honest, it was even worse. And but because you've given us all that we need, Jesus, you've given yourself, you've enabled us to have everlasting life, and you've given us the gift of the Spirit that we can live in the fruit of the Spirit of love, peace, patience, forbearance, kindness, gentleness, self-control, giving up things like hate and discord and power and jealousy and impurity. May we be bold in living from the Spirit. May we be bold in loving others so that people might see Jesus as in serving and generosity and volunteering. May us, may we all step up in our prayers. What would happen, not just for us, but churches all around the world? There is hope because there's Jesus. But we have got to step up. And I pray that we will. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Thanks for tuning in. And um, man, if you have any prayer requests, host, please post those right now. Um, the connect card for prayer requests. Um, if you have any questions, you can email me at rickw at efreebn.org. Um, next week, we're going to talk about a very important subject. And then we're going to hit, we're going to do another couple more weeks in Ecclesia. And then we're going to wrap things up. And then Pastor Omar's got something coming up uh, for July. And give me a chance to have a little time off and stuff. Um, but again, next week, looking forward to, we were going to try it out this week. Just as a reminder, we'll be live streaming. Everything will be the same for those of you watching digitally. Um, but you'll be a part of our worship center. And we'll make sure that you're a part of that. So we love you. Thanks for being here. Thanks for being a part of the Ecclesia EFC. God bless. Have a great week, and we'll see you next week.